Well, this is the Only One Shot Golf Podcast, and I'm Jim Gallagher, Jr., and we have one of the top amateur college players in the country. He's the current U.S. men's amateur champion, All-American, All-SEC, Palmer Cup member, you name it, Sam Bennett has accomplished it. Let's welcome Texas A&M Sam Bennett to the podcast. Sam, thanks for spending some time with us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's been fun watching your career. Uh, I actually, we were talking before we started that I watched you play at Old Waverly at Mississippi State's uh, college event and, and watched you play the first round there. And you end up winning it. You end up winning a couple times that season. You had, you're, it's been fun to watch the progress, uh, your, your career progress uh, and everything. But let's get to know you a little bit better. You grew up in Madisonville, Texas, a population of about 45, 4,600 people. Uh, and who were some of your early influences on uh, when you grew up? Yeah, just uh, my dad. I mean, uh, dad and grandpa started playing golf they were, ever since, you know, I could walk. And um, grandpa would take me out to my little nine-hole course. And, you know, I'd pretty much, you know, stay out there till sunrise to sunset and just, you know, mess around on that little course. What was it that, got, that hooked you on golf? Was there a particular time you remember or what hooked you in playing golf and, and thinking, hey, I may want to do this a little further on? Yeah, no, nothing, never really got hooked. Um, you know, I played multiple sports growing up, and, you know, golf wasn't always the one. But um, kind of once I started receiving, you know, letters and, you know, eighth grade um, or some, from some college coaches, that's when I kind of, you know, realized this is what I should probably, you know, this is what I want to do for, you know, for college and whatnot. You were all district guard in basketball. That had to be at baseball. You were defensive player in tennis. Is there any sports you can't play, or is it everything with a ball you just loved and fell in love playing any sport with a ball? Yeah, I'm not too good with my feet, but other than that, <laughs> solving some some of my hands, I'm pretty good. When you look back at basketball, what's the most? Uh, how many points did you? What was the highest points that you got in one game? Uh, I scored. It was 35. Wow. And then I scored. 21 and a quarter once. Did you really? Yeah. You know, I was watching a video. I think you did it for the USGA. You still got it. You uh, still shoot some hoops every once in a while. I know you're not supposed to be playing while you're playing golf. Coach Corton does not need to know that he on this podcast. You don't have to tell me everything, but you still get to shoot around a little bit? Oh, yeah. We went to uh, – I actually played basketball yesterday. We went to the rack and, um, you know, had some, had some good runs. Um yeah, we still play anything that, uh, you know, keeps – get away from golf, but still be able to keep, you know, the competitive nature going. It, it's nice. You know, I always feel like it's it's good for kids to play multiple sports. Obviously, you did. What's your take on that? Do you think kids playing golf should play all other sports growing up? For sure. I mean, it was different for me a little bit just from, um, you know, growing up in a small town and kind of, you know, having that will to be able to do that. Um I know it can be different in some bigger schools, but um, no, for me it was nice. Um, just how competitive you stay, and uh, you know, having to you know do this, playing them playoff games for you know basketball, having to make you know different plays, you know, being around the team aspect, having to you know do different stuff, whether it's running you know foul poles in baseball or running you know suicide basketball, just you know stuff like that, and. Um, that I can think can help just from the competitive side and, um, you know, keeping you active and, and whatnot. You mentioned team sport. Golf's such an individual sport. You sort of kind of have to be a little selfish, a little all about me to play golf, but you mentioned team sports. College golf is a team sport. So, obviously, uh, the sports you played in high school had to help you. And you, you, you all have a pretty tight team at Texas A&M, don't you? Yeah, I, I love my team. Uh, you know, it's the reason I stay another year. And that's the fun thing about golf, too, is from the team aspect is, um, um, you know, you can always, you know, you can be out of it, but, you know, still got to, you know, grind out of, you know, 77 to help your team the best you can. You know, that may be higher than that. Heck, it's been, sometimes it's been higher than that for for me. Um, but it, it's fun, and, um, you know, we're tied, and we're looking forward to the spring. You mentioned coming back, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but you also, we were talking about growing up on a nine-hole golf course. Chad Ramey, who's won on the PGA Tour, grew up in Fulton, Mississippi, nine-hole golf course, as did Ali Ewing, who's won three times on the LPGA. Uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily you have to grow up on a fancy golf course to be successful at it. Like you said, you were out there every single day. Y'all moved closer to, to, to an 18-hole golf course as you got older. 
But what are some of the things you learned growing up on that nine hole golf course to help you uh, kind of get through high school golf, junior golf, and, and on? Yeah, just, you know, I learned what it takes. You know, it took, uh, you know, shoot a good score. Um, I learned, you know, what it took for me to, you know, be successful uh, with ever having a lesson, just kind of, you know, figuring it out by myself, you know, like, you know, finding the game in the dirt is, you know, some of the great So, um, you know, only you can fix it. Um, you know, I just figured out, you know, you know, it's, you know, I've said it before, it's called golf. It's not golf swing, you know, no matter what it looks like, you're only, there's one objective and, um, you know, I kind of figured out how to play the game there. And then, um, you know, obviously I had to transition into, you know, some nicer golf courses. But the basics, I kind of knew what I needed to do. And then, uh, just went from there. But um, I think I was able to use my imagination a lot with, um, you know, some of the shots I was able to hit out there and with some dog legs and, um, you know, different lives and just kind of, you know, figure out what the, what the, what the club can do if you – you know, choke down, if you do this, you know, do different stuff, I kind of got a good understanding of, you know, my hands and, you know, club face awareness, and, um, you know, it's helped me, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm never going to change that. Did you have an instructor? Was your dad, your grandpa, your instructor? And it sounds like you do a lot of stuff on your own. Do you have one now? Uh, no, I don't have an instructor. Uh, an instructor, you know, my college coach four time he knows i'll swing pretty well on my tendencies but um no it's never uh never really a swing thing for me it's it's more of kind of filled and i mean my swing feels different every day sure does as far as any other probably golfer too but um yeah we just kind of work with what we got yeah you know you mentioned that that's i love the fact that you you own your own golf swing it's yours you know, when you're having a bad day, what's the advice you give to some of the juniors that might be listening? And you talked about grinding it out. What's some of the advice you give it to those kids that are, you know, maybe not having their best day, uh, maybe playing in front of a college coach for the first time, trying a little bit too hard? Yeah, I mean, uh, it can be tough. You know, golf is just, it's a funny game, man. Once, once you, we say it multiple times, once you think you have it figured out, you don't. You don't. Yeah. It just comes right back to you. And, uh, you know, that happened to me this, you know, fall, um, you know, after one of the USAM, getting content with a couple of things and not really content, just whatever, not going back to my basics of just the little things I was doing, you know, that were making me successful. Um, but um, it's tough, and I think you just got to, you know, stay with it. And, you know, one round doesn't, you know, define or matter. I mean, this game's tough. I mean, shot 80, you know, one time this year, and, you know, the next day I shot, I think, 67. So, um, you know, if you just know know your tendencies and kind of know what you're working with and, you know, know, you know, know what it takes and um, that it'll be fine. I think everything um, works out. But, um, you know, it's all, you know, it's a game between the ears and I think it matters how you just, you know, manage that, manage your expectations and uh, kind of knowing yourself a little more. How do you how do you manage those expectations? You mentioned the USAM. You've won the USAM. It's the you know the the, the crown uh, of all amateur golf. Did you have maybe a, put a little extra pressure on yourself when you came back to the fall, thinking, "Hey, I'm the USAM champ. I'm supposed to play like the USAM champ, etc." Did you have some personal expectations that maybe gotten away? Because a lot of people do. Hal Sutton said one time he was compared to Jack Nicklaus. He said, "How could I ever play like Jack Nicklaus? I'm Hal Sutton." Did you maybe have that uh, maybe after that win? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, I just think I went away from my basics a little bit, just doing what, you know, it takes for me to play good golf. I mean, that's what me and my coach, you know, talk about a lot, you know, what came in at golf is good enough. And, um, you know, that's why I kind of got caught up in my first, um, my first couple of tour events, you know, missing three cuts. And then, you know, I was trying to do too much out there, whether it's trying to make my swing pretty or my, you know, hit, you know, pretty shots rather than, you know, what it takes for me to be successful. It's just, you know, team and play, no three putts, budget close, just the little things to, you know, manage scores and, you know, put up good numbers. Uh, I think I kind of fell away from that and, um, you know, start started maybe trying to do a little stuff different. Um, maybe not just, but yes, yeah, so I did fall out of my ways a little bit. And, but no, no, not, no really added pressure or expectations. If anything, it made me, um, it made me a little more, um, it helped me on the course, just, you know, knowing that I was, you know, the USAM champ. But I did definitely, um, you know, fall, fall a little behind and 
got off the wrong page with some of the little stuff I was doing that was making me successful. As you mentioned, golf's tough. And when you think he got it figured out, it'll knock you back yeah. down. And it happens even to the best. And I think that's a, a great lesson for all those folks out there and, and uh, when when they're out there. But you, you, you went to Texas A&M. Why did you pick Texas A&M? What was it uh, that kind of wanted you to go to school there? Yeah, um, I don't know. Family family grew up here. You know, um, uh, the coaches were great. I think that was the main part, you know, when um you know, JT was here originally, and, you know, I had a lot of trust in him. He trusted me, and, uh, you know, he was great. And then now we got Fias, who's been an incredible asset for, for not only our team, for me personally um, with some things. But um, the facilities are great. And, I mean, I'm a small-town, you know, Texas kid, and it's 40 minutes from home. So I still got that, you know, small-town feel, feel, you know, with College Station, even though there's, you know, 70,000 people at our school, but, um, you know, it's right my alley, and I can't, I couldn't imagine myself anywhere else looking back. You mentioned your coaches. You got two coaches, Matt Fast, uh, played at Mississippi State, played the Corn Ferry Tour. I think he got his card that one year. A good friend of mine, I've known Matt since he was a kid, and Brian Corton. But what's what's it meant to have a couple guys who've been at that top level for you and the team to have them as their coaches and the experiences they have? What, the, what How much has that helped you all? For sure. I mean, they're they're great. I mean, they qualify with us um, a bunch, and it gets kind of annoying. You know, they'll, they're Matt, I think, you know, they're both, you know, four times over 40, Matt's over 30, and, um, you know, they still they still beat us and qualify and get them out. Uh, so they're, they're so good. They got it. But, um, you know, they've been out there. They know what it takes, um, you know, to be successful in the sport. You know, they've been out there for a little bit. They know the you know, the routines you need to have, how good those guys are, you know, what it takes to, you know, do this. And, you know, we talk about that and, you know, their experience um, helps. I know we know how good they are at golf and how successful they'd be. So that adds some, you know, trust and how we approach them and how we, you know, take what they say when, you know, when talking golf because, um, you know, we, we know they're good. And we know they got, they know what it, you know, takes. So um, I think that just helps us with the little, you know, reassurance once we get out there in the course and they're coaching us. You mentioned the golf side of it, but there's also that personal side that coaches bring. I've had many coaches say, hey, we're molding young men. Uh, you know, Brian Corton, like you said, and, and Matt Fast, both big influences. What are some of the influences they help maybe more on the personal side? We don't have to get too personal, but some of the things they help maybe off the golf course. Yeah, you know, I, lost, I mean, everybody knows, you know, I lost my father a couple of years ago and, you know, I went to, you know, Corton a bunch during that time and still do. And, um, you know, he's helped me, um, you know, just get through some days sometimes um, when things were tough. So it's fast. And, um, you know, just with routines um, right now, you know, I'm trying to, you know, be, be ready. So when I'm, when I'm done in May, I'm, you know, playing eight out of ten weeks on tour. And um, they know I need to change some stuff in my daily life and have it just to, you know, make it easier for when I get out there on the road and I'm, you know, by myself. Just some, you know, simple, you know, strategies I need to do to, be successful and um, they do that with each you know one of us you know they care about, about us just as much as people and you know who are coming and you know what we shoot in college golf tournaments so that's huge to have um you know two guys that are not only there for golf but um there for anything and you know life that you know comes at you if you if you need it yeah that's so important i think that's it's more important than people think when you're picking a school and a coach, and you don't always know. I always, would, I had two girls, one played at Mississippi State, one played at LSU, and I was like, hey, when they're recruiting you, they're selling you filet mignon and lobster, you know, they're they're throwing it all at you, and when you get to school, you're probably serving it. So uh, you just got to be able to separate that, but sounds like those two guys do a great job. You mentioned your dad. I know my wife, uh, when she was in college, her mom was diagnosed with cancer. Such a tough time. Tiger Woods with mm-hmm. his uh, his dad, and, and I just know it was so hard at such a young age to deal with that, and that had to be, I, I can't imagine what that was like, but uh, I know you've had some great memories there. You've got a tattoo of a saying your dad had on your arm, and he's there with you every day. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really cool to have somebody like that. My dad was my instructor, and, and uh, you know, we growing up with that, it was just so much fun to have. And then have college coaches. Like, I, I think when I tell kids, College is such a great time. You mentioned your team and how tight y'all were. Uh, I went to Tennessee. We've had a reunion, and we're still friends. We're all in our 50s and 60s, and we still take, play uh, you know, it together as a team. But your team has had a really good fall. We talked about that. 
Um, you know, what are some of the goals you had? You mentioned, let's go back. Last year, team misses the cut at NCAA. As I meant to mention uh, this earlier, you're by yourself. You're going to play the final round. I talked to Matt Fast. We talked about it. And you said something. You went out and, and you grinded it out that last day on your own and ended up finishing in the top ten. Tell us about that and what that was like to kind of keep grinding out, uh, even though the team didn't make it. Yeah, that was cool. You know, I wanted to um, – well, I was mad at Nationals. I mean, um, you know, we – we got, I think we got 16th and this is the, you know, cut to play the last day. And, um, you know, that was, I, I put that on me, you know, um, we had some other, you know, guys you know, falter a little bit coming in, but, um, you know, that, that was on me while we didn't, um, you know, while we didn't make the 15th. I mean, I missed a shorty for birdie on 17 when I was last out. And then, um, 18, I hit in the fairway bunker and, you know, that's my weakness. Um, my weakness was fairway bunkers and it showed there and I, I hit a terrible shot and ended up making, you know, bogey, and we, we missed um, by one. So that, that kind of stung a little bit. And, you know, I was kind of mad um, that I was, you know, the only one. Not mad, but I didn't want to be the only one out there playing when, um, you know, I felt like I let the team down. But um, it was fun to be out there with Fortan and, you know, grind out of, <laughs> you know, shoot a 64 at, you know, Greyhawk in the afternoon on the last day when, you know, that score is really not out there. But, um you know, we just did the little things, right? Like I was saying, you know, me and Courtney, we didn't do anything, you know, special. We just, you know, stacking shots, hitting the right shots, you know, doing the little things right to, uh, you know, put up a good score. But um, it was fun. It was fun um, being out there recording to, you know, get a cool, good finish. But, um, you know, I'm a team guy, and I wish we could have I could have been out there with my team. But this year we were, we were looking good, and um, I was excited to be back. And, um you know, helping my team out and, you know, the best way I can, you know, whether that's, you know, shooting, you know, winning golf tournaments or, you know, putting up, you know, grinding out of 75, like I was talking about. But, um, you know, we're going to be good this year. We had a pretty good fall, two wins, and then we just had one bad round at Georgia. But um, we're deep this year. Um, the past couple of years, we haven't been, you know, too deep. But this year, we got, you know, a bunch of guys who can play, and um, we're really competitive. And, I think we're all making each other a little bit better this year compared to the past. You know, uh, Cortan said your strength is you have no weaknesses. That's some pretty high praise. How would you describe your game? Yeah, um, it's pretty spot on. Um, I've said that a few times too. Um, there's, there's, it's pretty good. You know, tee to green, um, good wedge player. I got to be, you know, not hitting it, you know, the farthest. Kind of got to, you know, take advantage of those opportunities and. Uh, you know, my putting, when my putting, I mean, this is pretty obvious for any, you know, golfer at our at our level, but, um, you know, if I can get the, the putting's the, you know, the problem, if I can get the putting kind of dictates how I play, um, you know, if I can get that thing rolling, I'll be in contention, but, uh, you know, if not, I'll kind of be stagnant. So, um, you know, this off season, you know, I've talked, we have the end, end of the year meetings with my coaches, you know, not too long ago, and. You know, really, all only thing I it seemed like I needed to, you know, kind of improve to, you know, get my name, my game to the next level and be more consistent is inside 30 yards. So um, I think that's where we're going to be, you know, working on that because my ball striking is never, you know, too far off. But um, if I want to stay consistent and, you know, be successful. I think my, you know, my sh- short game needs to t- become a little more consistent. You played a couple PJ Tour events. Uh, that experience had to be incredible. What did you learn there that's going to help you uh, uh, maybe in your career as you continue on? For sure, yeah. I mean, I see those guys. Um, for example, I saw, um, you know, you know, Spieth was out there. He had an afternoon tee time on Friday and I, at Valero, Texas Open, and um, he was out there putting at 9 o'clock in the morning when I had a – when he had like a 2 o'clock tee time, I was about to tee off, and I thought that was crazy. Same for Decky, just – you know what those guys do and you know how hard they actually work out i was able to you know see that firsthand and then uh just to see their their wedge play um you know they're that's the thing i noticed that you know we all hit it about the same um you know roughly generally speaking but um you know their wedges were all of them were dialed in and um you know if, what i noticed the big time is you know if they have a basic pitch or chip i mean instead of hitting it the you know five six feet you know like you know, most college guys or, you know, we do, um, you know, they knock it dead. So I, I really noticed that, um, you know, inside 100 yards, how good those guys are. You mentioned a couple of those things, you know, and we always ask our, our guests, you know, what separates that elite player from the elite? You mentioned that, that work ethic, the short game, the wedges, or anything else that 
either you've seen or you've been watching over the years that maybe separates, even at the college level, that elite player like yourself from the maybe the rest? Uh, no, I mean, I think you can just, you know, you can see it in some people. Some, you know, the competitive nature, the mental side comes in. If you if you want to be there, how someone handles handle this pressure, if they, you know, enjoy being under the gun in the moment, they have to be a big shot or they want to shy away from it. You know, if they, you know, soak it in and actually slow down or they're, you know, rushed to hit a shot or if they're, you can tell that they're nervous. But you, I think you can see it in some people that, you know, I've seen over the, you know, past, you, you know, you see Tiger and Rory and the, you know, Kepka's and it's all the, the looks some people get when they're actually playing, how they're just so, you know, laser focused and focused and enjoyed the moment. And, you know, I think that's what, you know, helped me a bunch is um, I try to help my teammates is, you know, enjoying the moment. You know, you, you, you should want to be nervous. You should want to have mm-hmm. to hit that big shot. But want to have to do everything. You know, that's probably, you know, practice and play and did it from a young age. You know, you should, you, you want to find yourself in those big moments because that's what you, you're supposed to do and not to, you know, shy away from it. I think that's what helped me is to, you know, realize that, you know, nerves are okay and, you know, pressure is fun and, you know, just soak it all in. You talked about pressure, big moments, confidence. You obviously play with a lot of confidence. Take us back to the USM and some of the highlights on that big win. Uh, was that a goal of yours, you know, maybe growing up to maybe win a USM? Yeah, I mean, growing up, I can remember my dad telling me, you know, you just need to sign up for the U.S. Junior Qualifier. You need to try to get in the USAM. Mm-hmm. And I uh, played my first USAM until um, Bandon Dunes my sophomore year because uh, COVID let me in because uh, they didn't do qualifying that year. And so they went back to, like, you know, top 400 and Wagger or something. So I was able to finally get in after, you know, trying my whole life just to, you know, get in the USAM. And then um, – but, I mean, looking back, I never saw my – looking back as a junior, I never really saw myself winning the USAM until, you know, all the experience set in, until I, you know, choked off my first college, you know, win in Laredo, I shot 42 on the back nine, and then, you know, talked to coaches, coaches and, you know, trying to figure out what it takes for me to – what I need to do to get better to win. And then, you know, finally went in the college tournament to, you know, shooting 80s and – tour events and then to coming back and winning more tournaments and then you know playing palmer cups and making the cut at the u.s open it's all kind of you know been built up and i can see it looking back just from all the you know tiny experiences and the you know faults and stuff that you know have shaped me into the player and you know given me the experience to succeed under you know that kind of pressure yeah that's such a that's so well said for sure so many doors have been opened with that win uh and helping your career go forward. Have you, ever, have you thought about some of those doors that have been opened and what lies ahead for you? Yeah, it's cool. You know, I mean, I, I, I've been watching my Masters highlights, just old ones, you know, close to the back nine from just to, just because I'm pretty excited to be there. I mean, that was a dream, you know, to go to Augusta. But, uh, yeah, definitely I'm going to, you know, be able to get a bunch of, hopefully a bunch of starts for all the gates. But, uh, you know, right now my, my focus is solely on myself and, you know, my team and what I need to do to get better, you know, mentally, physically, and how I can help my team, you know, went, try to, you know, compete for SECs and national championships this year. And then, uh, you know, once that hits, we'll, we'll, we'll um, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. But right now, I'm, you know, I'm trying to, you know, help, help the Aggies and, um, my teammates the best I can in the spring. How were you able to block out knowing in that USAM when you get to the semifinals and get towards it, that, hey, if I do this, I can get in Augusta. Were you able to block that out and stay focused on the matches? Obviously you did because you won, but that, that had to be entering your mind at some point. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, no matter who plays in the semifinal match, I always, you know, said growing up that I can't imagine, like, you know, the semifinal match is way more nervous than the, you know, the actual championship match, and you know that's true. I mean, you, you you know what's on the line. If you can just win that match, you know, Masters, US Open, British, and, uh, you know, definitely um, it's tough to block out, but um, when you're under the gun and, you know, I'm having to, you know, hit big shot after big shot, which, you know, the whole whole world watching, there's, uh, I was able to get pretty locked in and, um, you know, focused on what I was doing, but, um, I mean, I can't tell you it wasn't, you know, in the back of my mind, you know, it's, it's there. I, it's it's there. Yeah. Are you going to go? Are you going to? Are you going to have? I know you're so busy with you know school and golf. You're going to be able to play maybe ahead of Augusta and go down maybe play a practice round or two before the the tournament actually starts. Yeah. Apparently, you get six trips. Okay. Um, I'm 
about when the course opens. Um, I was hoping to go before Christmas, but um, I think they're shut down for a while. But, yeah, we're going to try to go up there and hope I can bring, you know, my brothers and grandpa and we can find a way. Um, I don't know. We're, we're trying to work on that. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to go down there a few times, um, you know, before it gets, you know, all the patrons and whatnot are there. I think it'd be cool to kind of see it um, when it's when it's pretty calm and, um, you know, no one's out there. So, uh, so definitely we're, we're going to try to get out there. Trust me, it's going to be everything you believed and dreamed of and even more because I remember walking in for the first time. And I, I went out early in my practice round so I could see the golf course. I know the stands were up, but when there was nobody out there, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and you can just you can kind of feel the moment and take it all in. And that's my advice is just, and you sound like, I know you will, is just enjoy that moment with your family because it's priceless. And you never know if you're going to get another chance to be there, but just it's it's heaven on earth. And I think when you look back at it, all the hard work you put in, it's it's going to hit you. But when you won the USAM and you're lifting the trophy, do you remember what went through your mind maybe that first time, that first thought maybe when you won won it overall? Uh, No, I was actually... um... It was funny. I guess I I lagged it up there on the last, and um, you know, went and tapped it in quick because I was like, oh, I just I don't want to hear him tell me it's good. I'm just gonna knock it in. But um, <laughs> knock it in. Um, you know, Gordon, the cameras come around me, and Gordon's right there, my coach, and he's like, I'm just kind of looking around. He's like, <laughs> he's like, dude, you on the USA? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to cry? Am I supposed to, like, fist bump? Like, what? So I was just looking around. But, um, no, when I was holding that trophy, I didn't, you know, it just, I don't know. I had no, this is going to sound weird, I guess, but I had no feelings. I was just, you know, I won the USAM. I did it. And I think just from, it was just weird because the match was all, you know, it was a semifinal match. It was important with the, you know, big shot on 17 and then, you know, 18 and then, you know, lagging it up there. I, I, it was like that was the moment, you know, the day prior and where all the hard work led up from the week and being out there seven days and having some other tough matches. It was kind of, I mean, I think after that I was just tired and I was just, you know, trying to realize that, dang, this actually this actually happened. I did it. Do you think having those tight matches helped you in those final matches when the match was close? I mean, I always felt like it was in match play. If you had blowouts, you never felt that pressure at the end. Do you think those other matches that were so – and you beat some great players, uh, by the way, coming through there. But did did, did that help you in that final match? I think so, yeah. I mean, my first match I had to go to uh, extra holes against Gabriel Check, who was a three-time Palmer Cupper. I mean, Mm -hmm. hell of a player and – having to go to that, you know, final hole and, you know, make, um, well, I, we went to the final hole or the p- first playoff hole and I got kind of going back to what I said about enjoying the uh, moment and kind of wanting to be there after, uh, I missed a shorty for par to, you know, it won one up on the round 64. I just, I looked at coach and, um, I said, this is why we play, right? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, we just started walking to the 19th hole. And that's the same thing I did on, the semifinal match when Minante walked it in on um, 15 and we were heading 16 all square in the semifinal match, I just looked at him and smiled. I said, this is why we play the game, right? And so I was just, I was enjoying it, man. Uh, it was fun. I, I was, I was, I was really enjoying being there and, you know, having to hit the, hit the shots. So I was, you know, having to hit, but um, yeah, that's, that's definitely tough. Um, you know, it's, it's tough closing out a match, you know, um, you feel like no leads never good enough in match play, even if you're, you know, three up. Um, it's it's hard to it, it's just hard to close out a match, and um, knowing that I was able to do that early uh, did give me some confidence. You know, in the, the final couple matches. What advice do you have for juniors? That was some great advice. You know, you, no lead safe. You got to finish out the match. Tough to finish it out. What advice do you have for some of the juniors who will be starting to play some match play out there? Yeah, match play is you know it, it's different. <clears throat> play, um, you just got to do what it, you, you know. You're playing the guy, and of course, you know whatever it takes, and. Um, you know, it's 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 tough to close out, but um, you know, you just gotta you just gotta be, you know, you gotta stay. I think the biggest thing about match play is, you know, what I did on 17th at USAM. I know I talked about that a bunch, and um, but it was a big moment, and just I think strictly from, you know, never being out of it, and you know, staying in the hole. If you can just stay in the hole and just slowly, just you know, never never give a hole away, never, you know, just the little things that um, you know, help you stay in it, and not um. You not you not not lose it and 
you know, feel like your opponent, you know, has a little edge on you, but if you can just stay in it, um, you'll be just fine. That's awesome. Uh, and I think, you know, when you look at all the things and we've talked about, it's an incredible story and, and, and I love your story and just hearing from you today, but what have you learned about Sam Bennett yourself through this whole process in these last few years of playing and just your, uh, your, your still your young life? Yeah. Just, uh, I just know, you know, no matter what's going on and, you know, my life, whether on the course, off the course, um, the stuff I've been able to accomplish to, you know, the, you know, my tough, tough trials and tribulations that, you know, I can, you know, I can do it. Um, you know, I've accomplished a lot of things when, um, you know, I had doubt and, you know, I, I do things, I still do things, um, today, you know, wake up, you know, scared or fearful, but, um, you know, I do it anyways. Um, and I think that's for anybody, you know, you, you don't, I mean, life's about like, you know, most of the stuff you do is, is not funny. You just got to get up and, you know, do it and you do it again and you see progress and you see results. And, um, you know, it's cool watching the process, especially for me, just from everything, you know, that's happened from, you know, some stuff in my life to my golf struggles. So, you know, see all the experience add up and everything starting, you know, to finally pay off and just knowing that, you know, no matter what's going on, um, that I can, you know, accomplish some pretty good feats. And that, and that not just goes for me, that goes for uh, anybody. That's great advice. Fantastic. What's uh, up ahead for you? I know you got a big spring ahead for the team. What are some of the goals maybe for the team and yourself uh, as you head into the spring uh, in January, February? Yeah, for sure. Well, I said, uh, I guess I sit fourth in PJ Tour U. And, um, you know, I'd like to get to that one spot. And, you know, with the new rankings coming out, even though it shouldn't, you know, matter too much for me, I guess I'll be on a little different path just, you know, with the AM and, you know, kind of highly ranked, getting some tour starts. But I'd really like to have a good season and try to, you know, get you know get back to that one spot where I was where I left, left off last year. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of looking more side, more so for the team side. Um, you know, I want to, you know, be a leader on this team and, you know, shoot the scores I should be shooting for, you know, my team to help them out. And, um, I mean, I want an SEC championship bad. Um, I love Sea Island. I love the match play format there. Um, we all love going back there. So, uh I'm I'm really looking forward, and we all are looking forward to getting back to Sion and you know trying to keep compete for that, and then hopefully you know peak at the right time come nationals. PGA Tour U has been a great thing for you, young players. Some players it's kept them in school. Now they're changing a little bit of that. Uh, that's been a fantastic uh, avenue for you guys out of college to get to the PGA Tour because it was closed for a while. You would go to the, and I'm not saying the Corn Ferry Tour is not a great place to learn some things, but it now allows maybe one of you or a few of you to have a better chance of getting the PGA tour right out of college. And I think that's been a, a, a fantastic thing, but Sam, I appreciate you spending some time with us. Uh, your story is fantastic. You're inspiring a lot of people and I appreciate you telling that story and allowing us to get to know you a little bit better. And, and we're going to wish you and the Aggies a lot of success. I'll probably see you out the NCAAs, uh, but I'll be doing a lot of the college golf, keeping up with that, but uh, it's been great catching up with you. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Well, that was Sam Bennett, and what a great story. Uh, been through some tough times at a very young age, and as he said, those experiences have helped him in life. And and uh, some of the times you the, the times you fall, you learn so much about yourself, uh, and and maybe even the sports you're playing, but more about those life lessons. And uh, he gave us some great advice, great advice for some of the kids out there. And he he's a story of the, kind of the underdog, I guess, but not really now because he's gotten to that level. But a guy that grew up on a nine-hole golf course and is. Uh, made a name for himself in amateur golf, USAM champ in, in, in college golf, and I'm sure he's going to have a very successful professional year, career, especially with the way he grinds it out. But uh, uh, we appreciate uh, him being with us today, and I appreciate Steve Azar for allowing us to use his music. You can find Steve at steveazar.com. Don't forget to get your copy of Only One Shot. That's available at Amazon, written by VJ Trollio teaching professional at the Old Waverly Golf Club. If you want to get a hold of us, you can get a hold of us at Only One Shot Golf at gmail.com. My name's Jim Gallagher, Jr. Appreciate you listening. Until next time, we'll see you later. To this land called home I'll breathe Mississippi Till I'm dead and gone